Oh! everybody welcome back to my channel today we have four tarantulas that desperately need to be rehoused one of them specifically is my Sambalpaeus cambridgi who i have grown from a tiny sling she is now about this big i actually got her in exoterra enclosure we'll rehouse her last though i actually also need to rehouse my acanthoscaria geniculata ephibopus uatum and my carabina leda who you guys haven't seen in probably a very long time yes. ah. So yeah, let's just get right into this. I think the best place to start is going to be with my smallest, which is right down here. <laughs> that is my Ephibopus uatum, and yeah, totally running out of space, really hollowed this enclosure out. So I think we definitely should give it something with a little bit more room. I've got one of these enclosures from the container store, so I guess we'll move it right on into this. It's got a little bit of height, but it also has a lot more surface area as well. So I think this will be a pretty good upgrade. Now we're not gonna get too fancy with the decor because as you see, it really just makes its own tunnels. So we're mainly just gonna put substrate in it. I don't think I'm even gonna really bother with cork. Maybe I'll do some leaf coverage, I don't know yet. All right, I've scooped a ton of substrate. Oh, this might be a little bit too much. Okay, yeah, that should be pretty good. So the substrate hits right under the ventilation. Because this thing is actually really fast and bolty, we're gonna go the safe method and rehouse it in a more contained environment like this. This way, if we have a runner, they're not gonna go too terribly far. Just gonna put in a little bit of moss and a few leaves just to give it some coverage. Nothing too heavy, just because like I said, they will burrow and we don't want anything caving in on them. Now what I'm gonna do is actually really simple. I'm just gonna try to get them to come out to keep an eye on, there we are, okay. See the spider is right there. Try to keep it as contained as possible. Sorry if my fingers get in the way. Let's try to poke it out. Yeah. Oop. When they bolt, they bolt. So that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid here. Ho oh ho! Do you guys see that? <laughs> just as I suspected. So now that it's kind of freaked out, I wonder if I could just... Yes. <laughs> Perfect. One of the good things about Ephibopus is they are very timid and quick, but they do kind of get in this like little ball when they're scared and just kind of freeze and hold still. And that's usually your opportunity to work with them as quickly as possible before they bolt again. But yeah, I think that's a nice little upgrade and it should be happy in here for quite a while. Still kind of small, but compared to when I got it, it's actually grown a lot. I like how it's little booty actually matches the moss in here. Hopefully this one turns out to be female. Cause if you remember, I actually did have about a four inch one and it ended up maturing into a male, so I sent it to my friend. But yeah, all right, let's move on to the next. Now, this one is gonna be a lot more tricky because as you can see, we have a giant cloud of webbing. This is my Carabina Leda. I actually got this as a sling a couple years ago now, and it's really um, not grown too terribly much. I gotta admit, it's not the fastest growing, but look at all this extensive webbing. It's insane. It's just like so busy, and there's just so many facets and hides. Like, I don't even know where it is half the time. I think I see it right here. For this enclosure, we are going to be using an Amok box, but instead of turning it this way, we're gonna turn it upside down. Upside down works much better for very arboreal tarantulas like Carabina, Vicularia. Does not work good for Somalpaeus, Peace Lotheria, because those typically make their hide more in the middle down. Arboreal like Avicularia and Carabina will make it from the middle up. And they don't tend to really use dirt in their hides like the Peace Lotheria and Somalpaeus. Anyway, I guess let's see how this goes. I think I'm gonna work on just getting it out first. Kind of difficult to work in, but you know, this webbing is so thick. Oh, there's so much sticky webbing. And of course I glued this. See it coming out. Now I could probably like drip some water in there to make it come out, but I'm just gonna try pu pulling it out a little bit. I 
actually wonder if I can just more easily poke it up and coax it into there. That might be a better tactic. If you see the foot down there, I'm just gonna try to get it to move a little bit more. I know you don't want to, but <laughs> you've kind of gotten way too big. I knew fishing this one out was not gonna be easy. <laughs> right here in this hidey hole. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Look at it, it's coming. You wanna go, oh! Oh my God. There we go. <laughs> Very smooth. Man, it's gonna be a B-I-T-C-H to get it out of this enclosure when it gets bigger. <laughs> Check it out. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. It finally has that like newer patterning on its bum. See how it's got like a green carapace and like a reddish orange abdomen with that pattern? It's so cool and such a unique looking spider. I really like this enclosure though. I think it's gonna web it up like crazy. But yeah, it's nice to actually see it for once because I never really see it in that webbing. But yeah, all right, it's time to move on to the next. Okay, so we have my Acanthoscaria geniculata. It actually does look like it might be in pre-molt, but it hasn't started making its web mat or anything. And I wanna get it in its new enclosure before it actually molts so that it actually has enough room to molt. As you can see, it's not the hugest upgrade, but it's definitely a pretty nice size up. This one's a lot more narrow than this enclosure. Unfortunately, this one's kind of like cloudy and yeah, <laughs> whatever, it's fine. Hopefully this one will be a pretty easy move. And we're gonna get some dirt over in here. Do a hunk of cork. And of course we want to take its water dish. It's a little dry moss over here. Now this is an Acanthoscaria geniculata, so they do have a tendency to be a little defensive. I wonder if we can just walk her on over. I don't want her to bolt, but she might walk over. Ah! Oh my God. That's right, it's an Acanthoscaria geniculata, so it's not gonna do that. <laughs> that means I need a catch cup that fits better in her enclosure, so. Well, aren't you fun? Now we don't really have anywhere to go. Perfect. And now we move to the new one. Not so bad, see? Yeah, I think this will be plenty of room. So I can just wet this moss a little bit. All right, so yeah, I think this will be pretty good. Hopefully this next molt, I can find out for sure if it is female or male. It would be pretty cool if it was female just because I've been raising it for so long. I love when I've got a female because then obviously you have them with you longer. Put it over here with the other tarantulas that have been rehoused. This one's still just kind of confused. So cool. I wouldn't be surprised if this one's gonna molt soon too, just judging by the size of that abdomen. I'll give this enclosure a nice spray down as well. Okay, so now it is time for this. It is the Exoterra Nano Tall. I really like to use this for my larger juveniles, sub-adults, and adults, depending on how big they get. But typically almost any adult tarantula is like good in this size box. All right, I feel like I've been upgrading a lot of my tarantulas into these lately, just because a lot of tarantulas that I had that were slings are now getting big enough for this. I'll use the background for this one. I don't really like to, but I think this specific one will definitely appreciate it. Give her substrate. I think this might be the one that ran into my hair when I rehoused it when it was little. That is what we are trying to avoid because Semelopeus, although they're not old worlds, their venom is supposed to be slightly more painful than your typical new world. And also they're really freaking fast and they tend to be more unpredictable, even more so than like a piece Lithuria. Now we wanna give it like a nice amount of substrate because although it is an arboreal, they do actually like to use dirt in it. So yeah, we're not doing anything too extravagant, just this pretty simple setup. As you see, it's kind of harder to see on this side. So I think it'll make its little hide right back there, if I had to guess. Check this big girl out, oh my gosh, she's so huge. Oh, how are we gonna do this? Hmm. 
I think I'm gonna put a little water dish over there also. Let's just try this first. Now I'm not sure, but I think we will be able to get her out pretty easy like this. Right, maybe I'm not doing a good idea. Yeah, she's like, she's like, no, screw this. Oh yeah, that might be a good idea. Oh, it's hard to film. Just trust me guys, I think I have an idea. There she goes. Okay, kind of. See, she just kind of found a new spot to go. Hard to see. Pull this out before she <laughs> notices. And yeah, shut that. Perfect. See, she's already found that spot. Like I kind of figured she would right back here. And if I had to guess, she will take the substrate and make a nice little hide right under here. Okay, so it's been a few days since she was rehoused, and as you see, she's just made it completely difficult to see anything, really. Hi, Tut. How are you? But yeah, check that out. Just dirt covered. It's like I can't even really see her in there. My little Amy walk came in this cup, and they're great for water dishes if you want to reuse them instead of just throwing them away. It always looks really bare before they start webbing it up. I could put a fake plant in here or something, but I really just want to give her the creative freedom to web it all up and make it her own. So that's what we're going to do. But yeah, I really think that this will be a nice upgrade because this was getting so tight on her. I just, I can't believe how big she got. Like, look how little this is. And she's been like still hiding in it. I just, this is definitely a great upgrade for her and very needed. All right, so everybody is rehoused and settling in nicely. I already misted everybody. I'm really trying to like include misting and stuff on camera because like, I can't tell you how many times I get yelled at in the comments to do something. And it's like, I don't think that everybody who comes across my videos is aware that like, I also like take care of my tarantulas off camera. In fact, what you see on camera is about like 5% of what I actually do with my pets, but I digress, I get it. It's just because people are looking out for my spiders. But yeah, I'm so glad that they are all finally rehoused. It is a nice relief and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Oh, okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed like this video. If you did, subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget to have an Instagram that is probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below and I will see you guys soon.